You're about to see some controversial commercials that are never going to be seen anywhere else on television. The ads are about breastfeeding, and their supporters say running the ads might save babies' lives. But the ads' critics say the ads are wrong and unfair to moms who can't breastfeed. Is that true? Or as Chief Investigative Correspondent Brian Ross asks, was it money talking? It may start like a beer commercial, but it's not. This is a public service announcement about breastfeeding, all designed to get the attention of pregnant women, saying you wouldn't risk your baby's health before it's born. Why start after? Recent studies show that babies who aren't breastfed are at a much greater risk for leukemia, ear infections, and diabetes. Babies were born to be breastfed. But that's a message that some people don't want to see. The commercial is one in a series of three TV spots to promote breastfeeding that have been kept off the air since late last year by the Bush administration, under pressure from the big companies that are in competition with breast milk, the companies that make infant formula. It's a controversy some see as corporate power against mother's milk. 2020 was able to obtain the never aired commercials from a source involved in the campaign. There's one with actors playing pregnant women log rolling. And another at a roller derby. Babies were born to be best fed. All part of a media campaign that was supposed to have gone nationwide last December to the joy of many pediatricians. Hallelujah. Finally, you know, we're struggling here in the trenches. And to have the government get in and help us out was just going to be terrific. Only breast milk for six months. Dr. Bobby Phillip of the Boston Medical Center was one of the pediatricians involved in the campaign and says its focus on the risks of not breastfeeding is the right way to go, given the immunities found in breast milk. There is a risk to the baby who is not breastfed in terms of getting ear infections, upper respiratory tract infections, um, certain forms of cancer. In fact, a study released just last month by the National Institutes of Health found that babies who are not breastfed have a 20% higher risk of death in their first year. In my opinion, breastfeeding is a huge public health issue similar to smoking because we know that there are significant risks to not breastfeeding. The public service announcements produced by the nonprofit Ad Council were about to be sent out when the decision was made in Washington to abruptly put the campaign on hold. A decision made at the government agency that was the official sponsor of the campaign the Department of Health and Human Services, run by Tommy Thompson, a member of President Bush's cabinet. What was the role of the infant formula industry in putting a hold in this campaign? To my knowledge, none. Acting Assistant Secretary Christina Beato, speaking for Secretary Thompson, says it was the department's decision alone to hold back the spots because of questions about their accuracy. The TV spots that they had at that time were draft spots. They had not made department clearance, I had not cleared them. But you're saying the infant formula industry played no role, brought no pressure? No pressure, no role. But a 2020 investigation has found that behind the effort to kill these commercials was an intense lobbying campaign organized by the three billion dollar a year infant formula industry, the pharmaceutical companies that make products such as Similac and Infamil, essential for women who cannot breastfeed and used by millions of others. The industry trade group says it strongly supports breastfeeding, but no company official would appear on 2020 to talk about the efforts to kill the ads. This was done because it was going to cost the formula manufacturers hundreds of millions of dollars? I don't know how much money. Dr. Jay Gordon, a pediatrician in Santa Monica, California, and a member of the breastfeeding committee of the American Academy of Pediatrics, says the goal of the campaign was to take customers away from the infant formula companies. But it was too effective. Because when you say not breastfeeding is risky, what you're saying is using infant formula is risky. And that is true, and they know it. Now there's a new way to help give your baby every advantage. Until now, the infant formula companies have had the airwaves to themselves, advertising their products as close to mother's milk. The only formula designed for baby's brain and eye development. The industry also spends millions to promote infant formula directly to doctors. 
comfort level for all of our formulas. If we give you and to the parents of newborns who get bags full of free formula as they are leaving the hospital. It's big business. It's a big business, and um, they have a lot more money than we do. Do the best you can, okay? It's a practice banned at Dr. Phillips' Boston Medical Center and in many foreign countries. For and one more reason, Dr. Phillips and others say there's a need for an aggressive campaign to promote breastfeeding. We're talking about newborn babies here. We're talking about people making money on the heads of newborn babies. And if you go over and look at just one little newborn baby, that's what makes you angry. To help kill the proposed campaign, the industry's trade group hired a well-connected Washington lobbyist, Clayton Yider, Secretary of Agriculture for the first President Bush and a former Republican Party chairman. Officials tell 2020 that Yider and industry executives were able to get something the breastfeeding advocates were not, a private meeting at the Department of Health and Human Services with Secretary Thompson to discuss the breastfeeding campaign. The secretary would certainly try to oblige out of courtesy such a person. But why is it the industry gets to meet with the secretary, Mr. Thompson, but the uh, breastfeeding advocacy groups do not? They didn't hire the right lobbyists? Is that what you're saying? The, I'm telling you, they have been working with this department all along. But Perhaps... they've asked to meet with Secretary Thompson and have not had a meeting like that. Oh, I'm not aware of that. Did you meet with people from the infant formula company? Yes, I did. I met with them sometime in the spring, late did spring. Did you meet with people from the advocacy groups? I have not met with people from advocacy groups. Yes. They never asked to meet with me. But you met with the industry? I met with the industry because they kept calling my office every two weeks. Yider declined to talk with us, but in a series of letters to Secretary Thompson obtained by 2020, one addressed Dear Tommy, Yider thanked Thompson for making some changes to the campaign, but asked for even more. The industry objected to what it called the grossly misleading visuals, such as the mechanical bull, and questioned the scientific validity of the figures used in the campaign, figures that Beato says should never have been included and will be removed from the ads. Absolutely not. not Absolutely not. Not accurate. Not accurate. You took leukemia it out. is out. There took is it. No, I took out leukemia and we took out the percentages. There is you, you no took out science. The there is no science to back up percentages. So others say they were. The percentages were valid. Those others are not our experts in this department. Those others include the former director of pediatrics at the University of Chicago Medical School, Dr. Larry Gartner, now the head of the breastfeeding committee for the American Academy of Pediatrics. When it comes to the scientific validity of this campaign, you were prepared to support that. Oh, absolutely. The ad campaign is backed by scientific research, by good research that has been reviewed now by two different panels. But to the dismay of Dr. Gartner and others, the industry had a surprising ally in its efforts against the campaign. Dr. Gartner's own professional society, the American Academy of Pediatrics, which gets several million dollars a year from formula companies. Top leaders of the academy met privately with industry officials about the campaign, but never told Dr. Gartner. They didn't ask for me to be there. They didn't even tell us about it. And you were never contacted, consulted? No. Never. The academy's executive director, Dr. Joe Sanders, says the industry's money gives it no influence. There is no such thing as corporate influence over the American Academy of Pediatrics. Whatever the connection, in its own letter to Secretary Thompson, the Academy questioned the accuracy and the approach of the breastfeeding campaign. We saw the, the information from the Ad Council and they uh, indicated that there was something about a woman riding a bull, a pregnant woman riding a, a mechanical bull. Um, there was a suggestion... What's wrong with that? Well, I don't think a pregnant woman belongs on a mechanical bull, do you? Did you see the commercial to see the context of it? Uh, I did not. But more than half of them. Today in Washington, the redone six month delayed campaign was finally unveiled. Months. It has been a long standing goal of this department to increase the number of mothers who breastfeed their babies, and Secretary Tommy Thompson is committed to that. Our, our opponents today, Katie is nine months pregnant, and Jenny is about eight. Many of the pictures were the same, but there were substantial changes from the version originally produced. The spot with the roller derby was killed altogether. 
The references to diabetes and leukemia also have been killed. The changes were so substantial that the ad agency that first conceived the campaign no longer wants to be associated with it. The fact that they managed to get this campaign watered down is evidence that money can influence uh, good medicine and that, that large amounts of money can influence even good doctors. And it's, it's, it's tragic. I mean, truly tragic. And it will hurt babies.